Hi, hi everyone. We're back again with more Sailor Moon. <laughs> it's going to take you forever to do this. I've actually lost track of the amount of hours I've put into this one. I was trying to keep track. I need to do a better job of that. But for those who are here, this is the progress. Actually got half of Sailor Moon there. Working on the other part of Sailor Moon and then a little bit of Sailor Venus here. And then Kaya is here, as usual, trying to get attention while I do this. And I'm going to review a manga that I have recently read while we do this. But first I want to kind of actually discuss Sailor Moon, and I'm sorry, this is really wobbling. I keep bumping into it today. Let's see if I can move it over a bit. Okay. Stop moving. There we go. I was going to tell about Sailor Moon, and I love the aesthetic of Sailor Moon. It's great to see a bunch of powerful girls in cute uniforms. But to be honest, despite my love of Sailor Moon, you'll see Sailor Moon everything all over everything I have. Not my favorite anime and or manga. I'm actually not a fan of the manga. I was the first story arc, I guess. But not really the later stories. I was really bored with the storytelling thought they could have done better. That's why whenever they talk about the love of Usagi and Mamoru, or Serena and Darian, depending on which versions you've watched, I was never impressed. Um, sorry, but I still love Sailor Moon. It was one of the first anime I really ever fell in love with. And again, like I said, the art style is fun. And I think that's a lot of it, is the art style. I think a lot of artists probably could have done better with the story. It's still the same idea, but maybe grew upon it. That's just me. And the way I am with manga, the reason I read so much manga is because it's a full story. American comics have a really bad, not all, but American comics have a really bad habit of not finishing stories, especially if you read the superhero stuff. The war has been going on forever. <laughs> Spider-Man, uh, look at Batman. And while I enjoy those comics, I do. I kind of jump into an arc and then out of an arc and by the time I jump back in I'm like what is going on but they're never they're literally never ending stories and it, yeah they've got some great characters but I prefer manga which has a for the most part clear start and finish towards not all. You get some really long story in Japan as well. But they still tend to finish. And I like a complete story. I am also usually impressed with most manga stories. I end up having at least some satisfaction with the ending. I read a lot of novels or series where I turn around and go, why is this ending a thing? <laughs> and then I end up widely disappointed. So to the point of the one I read recently that I want to review, it is Hiru Naka no Ryusei. It is written by Mika Yamamori, or Yamamori, depending on which accent you're going to use. It is 13 volumes long. 
It's from 2011. I am behind on my manga reading, or more whatever I find and end up reading in my spare time. It ran from 2011 to 2014. It does not have an anime, which is probably part of the reason it wasn't that popular. It was a story about a girl who moves from a small village to Tokyo to live with her uncle. I do not remember why she moved, but I remember being confused because part way through the series she goes home to visit her mom and I was pretty sure that they left, which was why she had to go live with her uncle. So I don't know why she was able to return home. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I remembered the reason she left in the first place, but it seemed unimportant. <laughs> I wasn't convinced when I first started this manga I was going to love it the way I did. So I'm just going to go right off the bat. I totally give this whole manga series five stars. Loved it. Loved it more when I finished it. The first few books, they were cute. It was a cute story, it was goofy, um, the girl comes from a small fishing village, she dazes out and ends up rescued by the man who's going to be her homeroom teacher, and she thinks he's weird. His weirdness does not last very long through the series, I mean, he has weird moments. But his weirdness kind of gets forgotten, and actually it feels like the first couple of novels in general, a lot of it gets not forgotten so much as sort of pushed aside, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. Everybody, actually everybody just seems way more defined later, and I, why is this not picking up any of these diamonds? I just changed, oh, there's barely any stickiness to that. Let's try one more time. Maybe I need to add more. Okay. Usually I clean these out, the drill pieces, if they're dirty. This isn't dirty. You can't really tell from that. It just doesn't really have a lot of sticky in it. This is the sticky stuff you use. I'll show you. Stick it just all the way in there and pull it out. There's just the, I mean, yeah, I went way off camera there, didn't I? And it won't focus because of the lighting. But you, I always have to run my finger back over it to get the excess off. I keep my sticky stuff in a little jar. I love that sound. Because, again, as I've mentioned repeatedly, Cat hair is a problem. <laughs> so, as I was saying, the characters kind of develop better, and you would think that would mean they didn't forget anything, but it kind of feels like they leave a lot of the personalities from the, maybe just the first novel behind. So she meets her, who will be her homeroom teacher, and it, it seems unimportant, you know. At first, it's like she gets an attachment to him, but it doesn't even feel like a real crush, and the way they introduce it, he just kind of looks out for her, and it feels like it's more because she's her uncle's daughter and they are friends, even though that friendship fits weird, too. <laughs> but if, in case you're not guessing from the first book, it wasn't anything bad it just was cutesy she wants to make friends which again kind of feels almost out of character for her because in the fishing area she had friends but she wasn't very outgoing in Tokyo she decides I'm going to be outgoing I guess even though it's never clearly stated and she instantly finds this classmate of hers and decides he's going to be her friend whether he likes it or not and he doesn't but ultimately he becomes her friend 
the first couple of books almost seem innocent even though she's falling in love with her teacher and it's obvious he gets a crush on her I'm like how is that innocent <laughs> but it plays off very sweetly and then it never gets dark it never gets too adult but it stops being the sweet story and starts being there are real feelings involved and the boy she first becomes friends with and the teacher both become options for her while i don't want to give away what happens in the story because that's no fun this is one of the first love triangles i've ever read where they didn't try to cop out one of the guys as an option a lot of shows and movies manga actually i wouldn't say that manga tends to do that but most of the time you know who's going to be a clear winner in the manga but a lot of shows cop out and try to make one of the guys a jerk just to make it easier for the lead female to make a choice when I think it's more interesting when they're both good characters in their own right and you have to decide which one fits with her the best and yes it makes it a tougher option and I will admit through this series I wasn't really sure who I was rooting for now I guess in a more PC culture, and I'm not insulting PC culture, I'm all for it, but I guess in a more PC culture we should be like, well she shouldn't fall in love with her teacher and he shouldn't fall in love with her and that's wrong and okay, sure, I'll go for that. <laughs> but in the I really enjoy forbidden romances and it's nice to think those kind of things, I enjoy that kind of story. But the teenager she falls in love with is a really good character as well and they are both very good for her in their own ways at least and I enjoyed not knowing who she was going to choose and who I wanted her to choose For the record, I haven't watched the last season of Jane the Virgin yet, but Jane the Virgin kind of is good at that too. Um, I didn't want to make it sound like nobody's ever done a good love triangle before. <laughs> and the manga I just read also does a good job of giving some of the other characters story arcs. And while they are not as detailed as the main characters, of course, they at least make it so the characters can grow. They do have an epilogue chapter at the end, um, a six years later, but it's very, very short and not very detailed and well satisfying for our main couple it does leave the um, side story characters kind of up in the air so unfortunately we do not find all the answers for them but we can assume they all ended up happily ever after right it's more fun that way i like a good happily ever after I also love a good tragedy, though. <laughs> but this needed to be a happily ever after. I think that's all I want to say about it. it it's a cute little romance no story. I enjoyed all of it. But it was one that definitely got better as it went along. Where most of the time, I'm like, okay, this is like five or six novels longer than it needed to be because they just want to stretch it out. I'm 
my favorite type of manga are romance novels. Of course, I'm such a girl. I, I understand this about myself. I do enjoy some that are not romance. Ranma One Half is probably one of my favorite. Um, it's still a little romancy, but still pretty great. And then I read Attack on Titan and watch Attack on Titan. But I think to get out of the romance genre, the story has to be very, very compelling to me. Again, for manga. Novels, yes, I read a lot of romance as well, but I am more open to exploring other genres and novels and movies and TV shows are just a free-for-all, whatever I can get. Anything that keeps me entertained. I think the reason I like romance and manga so much is, one, it makes for a shorter series most of the time. And I like to be, I, as I stated at the beginning, I like to be able to complete a series. The other reason is, I think they actually do a better job of telling a romance story. Of course, most of them take place in teenage years, and I'm way past that. Oops, my light just went off. I think you guys can actually see it better when my light goes off. I really see the pattern. Now, I did not mean to insult anybody if they love Sailor Moon, including everything about it. Please do. Once upon a time I did. I think my tastes have just grown since then where I still hold respect for the anime. But I think it made it worse watching Sailor Moon Crystal and realizing the manga was not that good. The original anime probably was the best and they still had all of these girls, they managed to not develop any further than they could have. Give them storylines and story arcs. That's always been my biggest problem with Sailor Moon. Why create all of these other characters and give them such vivid personalities and go, meh, but they're, they're really side characters. Really side characters. And I know, as somebody argued once, it's called Sailor Moon. Yes, but... There's so many other characters, and none of them feel like they got anything out of it. Where, like I said, the manga I just read today, or finished today, I didn't just read it today. You know, that's a lot of volumes to read in one day. That at least gave the characters story, and gave them a chance to grow and do something. And again, that was a romance novel that had some friends and it still managed to give them better story. I think a story like Sailor Moon could have gone on almost forever just focusing on all of the other girls. So if the creator wanted to, you know, write new stories revolving around the other girls, letting them have some happy endings, I'd be okay with I'd probably read that, and then I'd probably grumble that it wasn't as good, <laughs> but I'd still read it. So, yes, read the manga. The English title is Daylight Shooting Star. I found it through a Japanese translated website. Because I am not sure it actually ever was released in America. Or in English, which isn't always through America, is it? Canada does a lot with that. But I recommend it. Five stars. Loved it from start to finish. Well, liked it from start, loved it at the finish. I, I raced through that last book. I think that's all for today, guys. That reached the 20 minute mark, which is what I'm trying to keep them at. I'll do 
do the one last shot as usual. So you can see Ducky and Lucy. You want to say goodnight to all the kitties? Alright everyone, see you the next time.